May God bless you. It's a joy to welcome you to your homes. If you're ever in our area, please stop by and be a part of one of our services. I promise you will feel right at home. I heard about this six-year-old boy. He was standing in the church lobby, staring at a large plaque on the wall. It was filled with names, with small American flags by them. He asked the pastor what it was. The pastor explained how that was a memorial to all the young men and women that died in the service. The little boy stood there silently, very concerned. Was it the 8.30 or 11.00 service? Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I want to talk to you today about hope for your future. We all have things that come against us, people that aren't fair, a sickness that won't seem to go away, or a setback in our finances. Sometimes it's no fault of our own. We were born into difficult situations, parents that weren't around, depression and addictions that keep getting passed down. We wonder, why am I having this opposition? Why was I raised in an unhealthy environment? Why did this company let me go after all these years? It's because there's something in you that the enemy is trying to stop. Those bad breaks were not random. You weren't just unlucky. Those were strategic attacks. If the enemy wasn't threatened by you, he wouldn't be trying to hold you back. If he couldn't see greatness in you, he wouldn't waste his time. When you gave your life to Christ, he knew you were destined for greatness. But the challenge is that you became a target for the enemy. He knows you're destined to take new ground. He knows God has favored you to leave your mark, so he's going to work overtime. Many times, the enemy knows who we are even before we realize who we are. When David was a teenager working out in the shepherd's field, he seemed as ordinary as can be. He didn't have a significant position taking care of his father's sheep. He didn't come from wealth and influence. They were a low-income family. Nothing about David stood out. Why did his father leave him in the shepherd's field when Samuel came to anoint one of the sons as the next king? It was no big deal to bring him in. Why did he disrespect David when David took lunch to his brothers when they were in the army camp? Why did his oldest brother belittle and make fun of him? Why was he jealous? But the enemy can see things in you that you may not see in yourself. David saw himself as ordinary, but even the enemy knew he was a giant killer. He knew he was a history maker. That's why he came against David so strongly. Many of the difficulties you face, things that don't make sense, opposition that came out of nowhere, people who turned on you, are because there's a giant killer in you. There's a history maker. You may not be able to see it yet, but even the enemy can see there's greatness in you. Have a new perspective. Those difficulties are a sign something amazing is in your future. Mark chapter 5 there was a man who was possessed with an evil spirit. It had gotten so bad that no one could control him. They sent him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, to a place called the Gadanes, where he could live among the tombs in a graveyard. They tried to chain him up, but he was so strong he would break the chains. All through the night he would wander through the tombs, wearing no clothes, cutting himself and screaming. This man didn't look like he had much of a chance. Deranged and out of his mind, society had written him off. I can imagine some nights he had moments of sanity where he would look up and say, God, please help me. Why am I so tormented? I want to go back. It looked like this was his destiny. People had given up on him, but God never gives up on us. Nobody should write him off, thinking it's too far gone. Don't write your child, your neighbor, or your cousin off. 
They may seem like they're too bad, too addicted, or too far off course. The enemy wouldn't be fighting them that hard if there wasn't something amazing on the inside of them. When Jesus was in Galilee teaching people, instead of going to rest where he normally did, he told the disciples he wanted to cross to the other side of the lake. In the middle of the night, while they were on the boat, a huge storm arose. The waves started crashing over the boat, filling it with water, and it looked like it was going to sink. Jesus was asleep in the back. The disciples frantically woke Jesus, saying, Wake up! Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm, Peace, be still. Suddenly the winds and waves stopped. Everything was perfectly calm. The next morning, when they arrived on the shore, Jesus was getting out of the boat when a strange man came running up to him, fell on his knees, and started screaming. Jesus spoke to the demons and told them to come out. Instantly, the man was healed. The scripture says they saw the man sitting fully clothed and in his right mind. What's interesting is that when Jesus was on the boat, headed toward the Gadaenes, the huge storm that arose wasn't random. It wasn't just an act of nature or a coincidence. That was the enemy trying to stop Jesus from getting to the man. You would think the enemy would be satisfied. After all, the man was possessed, out of his mind, and cutting himself. Surely he was no threat. He would never do anything right. But no, the enemy knew despite all he had been through. The cutting, the torment, the confusion, that this man still had greatness in him, still had a destiny to fulfill. When the enemy saw Jesus crossing the lake, he thought, I've got to keep him from getting here. There is a fight for your future. But what I want you to see is that it's not your battle. God is fighting for you. The enemy may send the storm and opposition that looks too big, but don't worry. God controls the wind. He overrides the opposition that's trying to stop you from your destiny. God is speaking to them right now. Breakthroughs are coming. Healing is coming. Freedom is coming. Things that look like they could never turn around. The storm seems darker than ever. On your own you don't have a chance. But on your own, get ready because victory is coming. Just like this man, you're going to see God override what's trying to stop you. There's no storm too strong for our God to calm. No giant too big for him to defeat. No fire too hot for him to extinguish. This man that was deranged didn't know that Jesus had spoken to the wind. He didn't know there was a huge storm. Jesus had gone to great lengths to get to him. He just saw him show up on the shore. You don't know how many storms the enemy has sent to try to keep God from getting to you. How many times God has spoken, Peace, be still, saying, That's my son. That's my daughter. I'm going to break those chains. They're going to fulfill their destiny. God has been fighting for you your whole life, pushing back forces of darkness, crossing lakes, calming storms, calming storms, just to get to you. Some of these battles took place when you were a small child. The enemy knew way back then what you were called to be. He could see the favor and anointing on your life. He could see you were destined for greatness. So he worked overtime trying to stop your destiny through things you had no control over. My father, as a two-year-old little boy, was walking by a fire and fell into it. Nobody was there to save him. He could have been killed out of nowhere. He couldn't save himself. That was God fighting for him. The enemy sent the storm, but God said, peace, be still. David said in Psalm 31, Lord, I praise you for you refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Why did that fire not take my father out? God refused to let the enemy triumph. Why did that accident not harm you? God refused to let it harm you. Why did you beat the cancer? Why did that unhealthy childhood not stop you? Why hasn't that addiction finished you off? 
because God's purpose is more powerful than the enemy's. The forces of darkness cannot stop what God has ordained for you. If you only knew all the things God has refused to let happen to you, you may have had some bad breaks and disappointments, but just the fact that you're still here is a sign that God's favor is on your life. There may be obstacles trying to stop you now. You don't understand it, but it's because there's greatness in you. The enemy doesn't come against people who don't have anything. If you went a threat, he'd leave you alone. In one sense, you can take it as a compliment. Yes, you have big obstacles, but you know it's because you have a big destiny. You may have had some bad breaks and disappointments, but they could not finish you off. You're still standing. The enemy wouldn't have wasted so much time and energy on you if there wasn't something amazing in your future. Now stay encouraged. Don't go around complaining about what didn't work out or what you didn't get. God is still working. He's a God of restoration. He will make up for what was unfair and pay you back for the wrongs that were done. Way back as a small child, the enemy knew my father would be the first one in our family to give his life to Christ. He knew he would be the one to break the cycle of poverty, start Lakewood, and leave children and grandchildren to continue it on. No wonder he tried to stop him in the fire. No wonder his family told him all he knew how to do was pick cotton and that he could never become a minister. No wonder one church asked him to resign because his message of faith and victory didn't fit in. When you have a big future, the enemy is not going to just roll out the red carpet and let you fulfill it. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, A wide door of opportunity is open to me, and there are many adversaries. The many adversaries don't mean God has forgotten about you or that you've been left out. It's because of the wide doors that are about to open. It's because of the favor that's in your future. You can look back over your life and see things that came against you, some things you had nothing to do with. You were left out, mischaracterized, made to look bad. Other times, you tried to step up to a new level, tried to set a new standard, but opposition came out of the woodwork. There are forces that don't want you to take new ground. When the enemy sees you start to make progress, he'll send the storm, the opposition, the trouble. That's when God will step up and say, Peace, be still. The storm cannot stop our God. Whatever you're up against, it's not a sign that you're stuck. It's a sign that promotion is coming. The storm is a sign that God is close to the breakthrough. You're about to see things change, change in your favor. When Moses was born, the Pharaoh had put out a decree that all the Hebrew male babies were to be killed at birth. Pharaoh was concerned that the Israelites would grow larger than the Egyptians and overtake them. Not only that, it was prophesied that Moses would deliver the Israelites out of slavery. It wasn't a coincidence that Moses was born with forces against him. Nothing he had done wasn't his poor choices. But from his birth, the enemy was trying to stop him. His mother hid him in the house for three months, but eventually he got too big. She feared he would be found and killed, so she put him in a small basket and sent him floating down the Nile River. It just so happened Pharaoh's daughter was out taking a walk when she heard the cries coming from the basket. She opened it and couldn't believe it. She fell in love with this little baby. What's interesting is she knew he was a Hebrew baby. She knew he wasn't supposed to live. Her father was the one who made the decree, but for some reason she and her father, the Pharaoh, decided it was okay for her to keep the baby. When God is fighting your battles, things will happen that don't make sense. When he says, peace, be still, storms that look impossible will suddenly calm. You were raised in an environment that wasn't real healthy. You have plenty of reasons to be sour. You might think that you could never do anything because you've been through too much. How do you know you're not a miracle in the making? 
How do you know that adversity is not a sign that greatness is in you? That the enemy tried to push you to keep you from leaving your mark? But God stepped up and said, Peace, be still. He didn't bring you through because you're ordinary. Now you need to step into your greatness. Quit believing those lies that you've had too many bad breaks. It doesn't have to be fair for God to do something awesome in your life. In fact, when it's not fair, when you're the underdog, when the enemy is trying to stop you, that's when God steps up. It wasn't fair that David's own family belittled him, but that didn't stop him from taking the throne. It wasn't fair that Joseph was thrown into a pit, lied about and put in prison, but that didn't stop him from becoming the prime minister. It wasn't fair that Moses was born under a death decree and his parents had to hide him, but that didn't stop him from delivering Israel. Who says it has to be fair for you to fulfill your destiny? No bad break has cancelled God's plan for your life. The reason it's not fair is that there's something in you that the enemy doesn't want. There's an assignment God has for you that the enemy is trying to stop. An anointing, an empowerment, and a favor that he doesn't want you to see. The good news is that he doesn't have the final say. Now get ready to step into your greatness. My sister Lisa was born with something like cerebral palsy. The doctors told my parents she might never be able to walk or feed herself. The first year, she couldn't lift her head and had no sucking reflex. By the grace of God over time, she defied the odds and kept getting better and better. Growing up, there were five of us kids in the house, all of us including Lisa. We played and stayed active. Lisa, having come through that birth injury, couldn't do everything we could. When we were choosing teams to play kickball with our friends in the neighborhood, Lisa would always be chosen, and toward the very end, right before my brother Paul. But it seemed like it was one bad break after another for Lisa. In our early twenties, she went through a breakup in a relationship that was very hurtful and very unfair. Not long after that, she was working with us here at the church, opening my father's mail. One day she opened a package and it exploded in her lap. It was a bomb that blew up part of her leg and injured her stomach. She was rushed to the hospital and had to have surgery. The investigators told us if the package had been turned long ways in her lap instead of sideways, she would have been instantly killed. It was a pipe bomb. When it exploded, the nails blew sideways away from her instead of inward. Why did Lisa have all these things coming against her? Since she was a child, the enemy knew there was something special in her. An anointing to teach, a gifting to inspire, a favor to help build people. Every time the enemy sent a storm, God stepped up and said, Peace, be still. When the bomb exploded, God said, Bomb, you can't finish her off. I have the final say. God refused to let her enemies triumph over her. Lisa says that the attacks she faced were not random. They were strategic attacks for one reason, because of what's in her. Purpose, destiny, greatness. If you will keep moving forward and not get bitter over what hasn't worked out, at some point you're going to step into what the enemy didn't want you to see. New levels of blessing, opportunity like you've never dreamed. God is taking you where you couldn't go on your own. A friend of mine grew up in a large family in Puerto Rico with 17 brothers and sisters. His parents were heavily involved in witchcraft. When he was three years old, his mother was in a trance and declared over him that he was the son of the devil. He was too young to know any better, but imagine having people speaking things like that over your life. It didn't seem fair and looked like he was at a disadvantage, but people don't have the final say. What you can't see is behind the scenes. The Most High God is fighting for you. He overrules every negative thing that people have said. 
This young man moved to New York City with one of his brothers and fell into street life. Fighting and stealing were part of his everyday life. A year later, his best friend was stabbed and died in his arms. It seemed like this young man had no future, that he would never amount to much, and that he was too far off course. But what he couldn't see was that God was crossing the lake to get to him. God was on the way to turn things around. When forces come against you that strongly, you can be assured there's a great purpose for your life. There's great potential inside you. One day, a minister came up to him on the street and invited him to a service. This young man made fun of him and threatened to beat him. But when you plant a seed, you never know when it will take root. The next night, the young man and his whole gang showed up at the church. They planned to disrupt things and cause trouble. But when he began to hear about the love and forgiveness of our God, he felt something on the inside that he had never felt before. At the end of the service, against all odds, he stood and gave his life to Christ. Instantly, chains were broken off his mind. He felt a new sense of freedom, a new sense of purpose. He knew he was no longer the son of the devil, but the son of God. When you can't fight for yourself, you have to know God is fighting for you. He is bigger than any force that's trying to hold you back. He's bigger than negative words spoken over you. He's bigger than the past, bigger than how you were raised. You wouldn't have those difficulties if there wasn't greatness in you. Today, our friend Nikki Cruz is an amazing minister who goes around the world telling people what God has done. But what I'm saying is, Nikki couldn't change that on his own. Being born in that environment seemed unfair. The man who was deranged and cutting himself couldn't get free by himself. Even people couldn't help him, which is why they sent him away. The good news is, you have someone fighting for you. Behind the scenes, God's pushing back the forces of darkness, making things happen that you couldn't make happen. The scripture says, stand still and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. Keep doing the right thing, and God will take care of what's stopping you. He'll turn the opposition around, move the wrong people out of the way, and give you the breaks you need to get to where you're supposed to be. When I first started ministering back in 1999, it seemed like everyone was for me. People were so encouraging, cheering me on. But after a couple of years, I started facing some opposition from people who didn't understand me. I used to wonder why they were coming against me. I was just trying to keep the church going and talk about the goodness of God. I wasn't bothering anybody else. I realize now that the enemy doesn't fight you for where you are. He fights you for where you're going. I thought I would always be at the same level. I was satisfied to maintain where we were. But God had something bigger in me, things I couldn't see. The enemy wasn't fighting me for where I was. He was fighting me for the impact, for my books, for serious XM. You may be doing the right thing but facing opposition. You don't understand it, but it's because there's something in your future much bigger than you. You can't see it right now, but even the enemy knows it's there. He knows you're a giant, a history maker who's going to affect generations to come. Now, quit being discouraged. If you went a threat, the enemy wouldn't be bothering you. It's because of the greatness that's in you. What's coming against you may be bigger and stronger, but don't worry. The Most High God is fighting for you. Right now, he's crossing the lake on your behalf. Keep saying, be still. Now believe and declare that every storm you're facing is beginning to dissipate. Every chain that has held you back is being broken. The greatness in you is about to come out. New levels of favor, influence, opportunity, healing, breakthroughs, and the fullness of your destiny. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, if you would like to make Jesus the Lord of your life, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. We believe you got born again. 
Get in a good Bible-based church and keep God first in your life.